Hi, my name is Stephen Proud. I'm a electrical designer of 25 plus years of experience. The purpose of this video is to provide you a clearer understanding and to possibly accelerate your, your job that you're working on. Enjoy. Hello, this, uh, this video is a training video to help you understand the Festo CPX CMAX controller, this one right here. Um, and in this particular application, we're using an Allen Bradley Control Logics PLC connected to our CPX terminal, which is using a CPX FB32 Ethernet IP node. And that same rack in the next card over has got a CPX CMAX controller in it, which is talking with the valve and axis for the system. So as you can see in this picture right here, this is uh, my little demo unit right here, PLC, and a little bit better of an overview, you've got a valve. Over here we've got a DGCI axis. This is the general setup. This manual here is included with the project. So um, in any normal commissioning situation, the first thing you want to do is commission the axis by itself. The Festa configuration tool uh, is what you use to configure the axis. Uh, if you get online to it, you set up your interface right here. This COM5 is my USB dongle, which is surprised by Festo. When you go online for the first time with controllers out of the box, um, there are some steps you need to take. I'm assuming that you know how to do that at this point. Um, basically the, the hardware gets synchronized with the software and then at that point you've got a starting point. Now moving forward, um, this is my system right here, this is my little setup, this is what it sensed, so you know, it says it's a 300 millimeter stroke but in fact it determines it to be a little bit longer and it determines the valve size and so on and so forth. Um, before you can do anything you've got to commission the axis which means that you have to do a movement test down here and an identification. The movement test determines whether the tubing is correct or not. The identification is a process in which the maximum excel decel velocity is determined and and also it's, it's based upon the load and there's an understanding based on the parameters that you input into the controller FCT program here that it will tune itself and then become self adapted after that. So before you can do any of that stuff you really need to understand what your actual application limits are and the starting point here is this right here. You 100% need to know and understand what the mass of the workpiece is, the workpiece mass itself, the supply pressure, fitting position, so on and so forth. If you do not do this and put this in here before executing these routines down here, you'll have an extremely poorly responsive system. Um, also when it comes to loads, there are minimum loads for servo pneumatics. Whereas you might have two lighter product, you might have to actually add load to the system in order to make it stable. So, um, to execute anything via this software here, you have the device control. When you click on it, um, again, you'll have to synchronize. I'm just going to do an upload. I know what's in the project is a good project, so I'll let it upload. Okay, so we're uploaded. So, like I said, I've already done the test, but you know, you can reset it. Reset the test. Click on that at the start, and it will execute the test. Puts itself into commissioning mode and starts to move the axis back and forth. You can see by the value of the position, it's moving back and forth. So the movement test was completed. The next test. 
you would normally do with identification, I'm going to show you with the PLC logic that I have an identification sequence out outlined. Um, so just for your knowledge, there is a executable routine in here that will execute the appropriate steps necessary to do the identification. That's with an option. This, this is just to show you how to do some things. You won't have to program or do anything exactly the same. This is a guideline. Getting back to the control, then the next step is to do the identification. I'm going to reset it, which resets these numbers right here as well. Enable it. So right now we're doing a static and dynamic. The, um, like I said, the point of this is to do an adaptation to all the hardware and so on and so forth. Another thing that is uh, affecting this identification under controller data is this right here. This box right here, if you want, these two boxes right here will affect this. Uh, make sure you read the manuals and understand what this is. Normally you do not want to turn these off. Another important factor while we're doing all this is that uh, there's a dynamic help feature. I've kept the screen small on this so that you can see as much as possible, but when you click anywhere on here, it will give you the dynamic help over here exactly. Gain factor, gain factor, so on and so forth. So I'm going to turn that back off. So I'm going to execute an identification test from here. Enable it. It more or less tells you what it needs to do. It just gives you a couple of warnings. You have to have been able to turn it on. When you start the identification. You can hear it working here. Now I'll, I'll let it go so far and then I'll pause the video just so that it doesn't eat up the time. So to go back and forth, figuring out what its hardware and limits are. <coughs> the, the pneumatic valve. The VPWP will make a, I don't know if you can call it a gurgling noise but it, or a spitting noise. It definitely makes noise. That's normal. I'll, uh, I'll let you just listen to it for now. Right now I have a relatively large um, exhaust filter on it. It's a CRVZS part number 160234. And if it didn't have that, it would be a lot louder than it actually is right now. determine these as my VAX values, my reached Excel mode, my reached D cell, and it has tuned itself. If you were to look into the diagnostics, the, the, the optimized area, these gains in the project have been modified to suit. So now that we're commissioned, we are physically able to move anything we want. Press and hold this, it axis moves. Change position, press and hold that, move back. I was to go to the position set table, I can execute these. So you click on this, it's a little slow and sluggish today. We can move the axis back and forth here, so it's moving. Um, if I had these set up right, I could run the axis up here. If I wanted to go into force mode, I could also do that. You have diagnostics. 
and diagnostics memory. You've got uh, I.O. data, which is extremely important in what we're talking about, the FHPP data, the vessel handling positioning profile. You've got variables. If you want to read or rate variables, you can read variables. While you're monitoring, you don't even have to have the checkbox enabled here. So other important factors in the project are direct mode. This area here affects the PLC and how it can execute positional moves and force moves and so on and so forth. The I.O. data, this is also important to understand. Now, there's some defaults in here, but you have to reflect what you have configured here in your code. And uh, that's about all there is to the FCT configuration for the most part, other than some areas that you can use while you're in test.